Hello, and welcome to the fourth of four sessions of Forbidden Lands, which is a open world retro survival RPG fantasy thing from Free League Publishing. It's all those words in a probably different order than I said them. And uh, we've been playing uh, several sessions. This uses the Mutant Year Zero sort of base dice system, and we're kind of playing, playing with that. Uh, and uh, if you're watching this, this is part of the Gauntlet Hangouts, which is an online gaming community. You can find out more about that, including our blog, podcasts, zine, at gauntlet-rpg.com. So we have our hunter, our rogue, and our druid. We have a fighter. That fighter, uh, that player is not here. When a player is not here, I don't, I, I take their characters off the table. Uh, it's my general rule is I don't run them. Um, we just kind of take them off the table. I'm fine with you suggesting a situation that explains that they are, you know, standing guard or whatever, so they can serve as a bonus, but I'm not going to put them in danger and they're not going to be an active help to you. Um, and that may change your, change your threat calculus uh, as you go through the session. And that is perfectly legit. Um, to remind you, you have traveled uh, from uh, uh, the village of Hallows several days to the west. And or actually just a couple days now to think about it. Uh, to the west, to the lake, um, you found an ent walking back and forth on the shoreline. Uh, it spoke of a, of a bad tree uh, on the island where there's a big tower. You went over across. Uh, you found that there was a kind of a magical set of trees that were protecting the tower uh, as a trap. Uh, you disposed of those and you were attacked by a, a couple of beasts, essentially kind of made of sound. And uh, you kind of caught your breath after that and you were looking at heading in through this sort of archway into uh, the, the tower itself. And that is where we left off last time. Um, so everybody can mark your wits, uh, I'm sorry, your willpower up. And because you are down a person, uh, go ahead and heal up any damage that you are down. We will just just take that as a, as a, as a given. Um, uh, so I, I I think Brind can stand guard here, make sure nothing bad comes in as you three explore the tower. Does that seem like a reasonable justification? Did Brind have any um, goal? I think he was looking for a challenge. He was looking for for a worthy challenge. Okay. Um, but he may have rethought that after all the damage he took last time. Yeah, maybe maybe in the distance we hear more of those sing song beasts coming. Right? And yeah. we're gonna leave him to fight them back and hold them back while we get into the Yeah. Ruin. That seems yeah. that seems fair. Um, does anybody have any XP that you're gonna spend? I I spent my XP last time. Okay. I don't remember what I did. I like raised melee or might or something, but I only have one XP left. Okay. Um, uh, so what about for you, uh, Lauren or Hild? So I need to spend it. I think I have like 14 XP. Yes, you do. Cool. Um, so since we're down a fighter, um, fighting is... So there's marksmanship, which is ranged. Mm -hmm. And what is... Melee is fighting? Melee is fighting. Okay. And that costs talent plus uh, times three? Uh, talents are times three. Stats, uh, so skills are times five. Skills are so, times five. So one box of that will cost you five. What was a really good talent that Brind had that allowed them to attack twice? Uh, that was, I believe, uh, let me look here. Is that... Uh, that is the second rank of sword fighter. Sword fighter. What, what can I get get for one XP? Unfortunately, nothing. <laughs> can I, How much can I would it my, cost? Can I give my XP to Lauren so he can actually raise have fourteen? 
I mean, he has four. He has four left, so he can't really do much with it. If well, I can you do with three? You can change your skill. Uh, so, uh, three points for for the first level of a talent. Six if you're buying the second level of a talent. Okay. So yeah, if you wish to accept the uh, 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 the um, XP from Gavel, I will I will do that and and give you that that point. In that How case, much? then I'll take a point of melee. That sounds okay. good. Probably a good call. How much would it cost me to get rank two sword fighter without rank one having it right now? <laughs> so three plus six, so nine points. Okay, I will do that. And I will take Brid's sword from the. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but could I say that I bought one previously? Or yes, something? I think that's fair enough. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to give you his armor, but yeah, no, you, yeah can have, you can have a sword. Sounds good. <laughs> Okay, so we're 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 doing okay. We're yeah, okay. you guys are going to be fine, fine, no problems. Um, I'm going to make sure I pull the roller up here. Can I copy? Open that up in another tab. Um, so let us let me kind of describe where you're at now. You set off across uh, from the shore to the island early on in the morning. Uh, so it is still, it's not even noon yet. So the, the sun is still bright and out. Um, and you have looked sort of in through the, the, the stone gateway here. Um, and it's, it's pretty thick. Like it's, like it's kind of a corridor of maybe 15, 20 feet um, before it opens up into another room that is actually has some weird light to it. Um, uh, and I guess I want to ask how you're proceeding. What, what, what are you, what are you doing to it? I mean, and by the way, uh, if at any point your, your group decides that you wish to run, you can certainly say we are going to run now. So I think I'm going to take point because I can, you know, sense unnatural creatures before anyone else can. So I think okay. I'm going to look forward. Oh, that's my pride, by the way. That's not really not really a thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you will walk forward carefully, mm -hmm. uh, kind of get to the end of this hallway. And as I mentioned before, the tower itself is 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 quite wide. Like it is, it is quite qu quite a distance across. When you get into the end of this stone hallway, you will see that the tower is hollow in the middle mm -hmm. imagine that that it's a big sort of atrium uh at the top of the atrium uh there's some sort of there's stone like there's a uh, like a ceiling to it um maybe about 60 70 feet up um it and this sort of looks like an interior courtyard the light that you're seeing is coming from uh, a set of uh, like mirrors. You can see that those have been kind of cleverly set in various places inside here to uh, must be catching light from the windows on the outside. There must be a series of mirrors to kind of, you know, send uh, uh, sunlight down into this uh, uh, sort of uh, open area. And it is wild and brambled and and overgrown here you can make out that maybe there was some tile maybe there was a path or something here but everything has been been split and overgrown as you look around the inside and again imagine it's sort of dimly lit because the the light isn't that great the mirrors have gotten stained over the years you will see that there are three doors on sort of the outside wall of this that go into what must be the body of the tower. And essentially there's one to the east, one to the west, and one to the north from where you're coming in. Um, so why don't you make a scouting roll for me? Okay. Can I, can I uh, make a, uh, ask a quick question? Sure, absolutely. 
Uh, you said the inside is about 60 feet high? Yeah. It, how tall is the tower? Like, would that be the top floor? No. Well, it might be the top floor. The tower, you guess, is about 80, 100 feet tall. So there's clearly a level or something or up on top of that. Yeah. Okay. okay. And um, specifically, uh, let me get down and roll. Okay. I got two swords. Okay. Um, so... As you take a look around here, um, you're judging that the the sort of scrub floor here um, is dry. Like it, uh, uh, maybe maybe they had some kind of magical thing, or they had people that watered it, but that's all dried out. But the plants here look odd. Um, you can see that some of the undergrowth has kind of grown up kind of in a hump that you think might be like a well in the center of this. Um, uh, and you will also see that uh, there is like something that kind of glints a little bit white on the other side of uh, the 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 hall like by that door that's across to the north there's something like a pile of something over by it that that catches your eye and and looks strange to you um but problem is there's so much overgrowth and stuff here yeah you don't know um there might be stuff hidden underneath it um but you definitely can spot paths to to make your way around without getting too much into the 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 vegetation as it were so i have a question the the int on the other side of the water told us that there was a bad tree and it was trying to get to it. Are there any trees? You, you described overgrowth, but I don't, do you, are there any trees here? I look around. No, there's, there's no, there's no trees in this okay. space. Okay. We so I think we didn't, I'm sorry. We didn't look around the tower. Did we? You walked around the outside of it. Yeah. You, uh, um, you walked around. Yeah. Because because you checked what what uh, the 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 circle of of defensive trees. So yeah, you'd walked around it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And we didn't see anything like the the ant. No. There. No. So I tell the other two. I say, um, this is what I see. I think there's a well over here. I suspect it's not going to be good, and we have water today, so maybe we shouldn't get too close to that. But there is something white over, I think you said, near the north door. Yeah. And there's something over there that maybe we should inspect, but we should be careful. Um, and this is where the path kind of is. So um, do you, how do you guys want to go after this? Do you want to sneak in? Yeah, let's sneak. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, I'm probably not going to sneak, but I'm going to let you sneak all you want. Well, well I can lead a sneak. You okay. If you want to sneak it, yeah. unless you don't want to sneak. <laughs> no, that's fine. I'll, I'll okay. stand here. When you're done sneaking, let me know. Then I'll move forward. Okay. Then, Hild, you're going to kind of sneak forward to, to see what what is what. Let's have you go ahead and uh, uh, make that agility check with stealth. All right. I need to get the roller. Roller, roller. There we go. Got it. Okay. Agility is four. And one. And then if I fail, I can turn them into stuff with my willpower. Yeah. Which is good because I failed them all. Um, how many do I need? <laughs> just need one. Okay, then I will I will spend a willpowers. So you will walk your way around. Um, and again, uh, imagine that there's all kinds of, now you kind of, I mean, some dust is being kicked up. So you've got the the light from these mirrors that are mounted up. That's kind of, they're a little bit stained, but they're still nice. That's coming down. You've got all the dust motes in that, sort of the shafts of the light. As you come around the edge, you will see where that well is. Uh, on the other side of it, you can actually make out that sort of, seated against it on the other side overgrown 
and stuff. It looks like there's a skeleton there. Um, it's clearly, you know, someone died there and the, the, the thing is overgrown. And when you look by the door, at first you think it's the same sort of thing. Because it, it's a skeleton, but it's a skeleton of like a like a big hound, like a imagine like a big Irish wolfhound kind of skeleton. Um, but then when the skeleton kind of shifts its paws like a dog resetting itself, you're like, okay, that thing is mobile. But it does not hear you, it does not notice you. And I, I just, yeah, we, we go past the creepy dog that can move as a skeleton. Well, you see it's by still, it's seated by the north door. Now, you could try and, and go through the east or the west door then and evade its sight. I Otherwise, if you can, head towards the north, you're going to have to deal with it. I think as Hild starts to head towards the north, I think I kind of tap him on the shoulder and point towards the, I don't know, the east or the west door. Let, let's do that. Sure. Yeah, I'm good with either. <laughs> Ixnay on the moving skeleton A. <laughs> so which way do you want to go? Do you want to go to the right and to the east? Or do you want to go to the left and to the west? Let's go to the east. And I think now's the time to call Gavel up. And okay. I think we'll kind of hold there at the door, have Gavel come on up. So if he's detected or the something happens then we can defend him yeah gavels gavels uh uh excellent at stealth as well so i don't think there's any, really any need to have him roll since we've already had one one stealth check um you will be able to uh get to this door there is a lock on it um uh it does, and you kind of test it, and it does feel like the the very simple lock is is in place on the door. I'll just pick it. Okay, then that is a sleight uh, of hand. I believe it is sleight of hand. Yeah. All right. Do I have any bonuses to this? No. I do not. Okay, let's see. Roll. Ha, two swords and one skull. Oh, yeah. You get it open and you do it super quiet. Like, you turn it, uh, open the door, it comes open quietly. The hinges don't don't creak. You probably oiled it. Um, and you'll step inside and you will see that it's, it's a, a room that kind of bends around before it it kind of terminates in walls. So it's kind of this curved room. It's about 20 feet across um, and then a good, you know, 40 feet along. Um, it You can see furniture uh, in here. Um, uh, it looks very domestic, uh, like tables and chairs and basins and things like that. Um, uh, uh, and the uh, tiling here is quite nice. Like it in its heyday, this must have been a very nice place. You see this white tile uh, that's just been gummed by the dust of ages and so on. Um, and uh, as you kind of take a look down, you'll see that there is a set of stairs that hug the wall and kind of curve and go up to uh, a what like a a door in the floor that must lead up to the second level up there. Um, but that seems to be, besides the door that you came in, the only sort of doorway here in this room. Everything else is kind of open plan beds and domestics and things like that. Close the door and lock it. No skeletons allowed. Okay, fair enough. Actually, so we're inside. You're going to lock it behind us? Yeah, behind us, yeah. Before you lock it behind us, should we just prop it so if we need to run away, we can just knock it, you know, like put a spike or something under the door, or some piece of wood or something. So we, if we need to get out, we can kick it, but they can't get in? Sure. Well, I was, I was thinking it would be pretty quick to unlock it, right? Okay. Yeah. You, he got two successes, so you can rig the lock to, uh, uh, to, 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 to quick release, I think, very easily here. 
fantastic. We have, the, we have the classic Dead Man's release. I forgot we were with a professional. Yes, you with a pro. Um, uh, so yeah, it has the look of of a household in some ways. Like this, this was was a, a place that people, you know, not a lot of people, but some people lived and worked in here. Clearly, but you said in the other room that there was a lot of dust that we disturbed as we went through. Yeah, meaning mostly probably, the vegeta vegetation and stuff like that you would have kicked up. Yeah, probably. So that means that probably people hadn't moved through there recently. But it, what about in this room? Is it pretty? It, does it look like anyone's been here recently? I would like uh, our hunter to make a scouting roll for me. I will do that. Scouting is wits. What are my wits? Um, just scouting and wits, right? Yep. Uh, one success and one skull. So one success will tell you as you kind of look around here, you'll see the, 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 the classic, like a few small vermin tracks, like, like maybe rats or, or other, other small beasts like that, um, that, that are around, they're slightly older but you will also see there are scratches and sort of smaller hooked claw marks that have a kind of weird, you know, they're, they're in a little bit of space and then they kind of pop to another, like, like maybe they, it hops or whatever it is can fly a little bit. Um, the, the the claws themselves are not that big and they sort of look maybe like like bird or reptile claws. Um, and that seems to be the thing where, that that is is here. Um, it, where does it seem to be going like from where to where? Uh, it looks like uh, uh, the, the you find the tracks in various spots like it's kind of poked around in this area, gone up the stairs. Uh, you can see that it gets, that some of it goes out uh, back out to the, uh, the the courtyard. Okay. So what do you three want to do? So there's one a set of stairs that go up. Yep. And then going back out, and nothing else in here. The just uh, the the stuff that that's here. Um, uh, if you want to look more extensively, you might be able to find some loot here. Um, I, I don't need to loot. Do you guys want me to loot? Had, Hild, how do you feel about stopping and taking some time to to see what treasures you might be able to find in this place? I don't know if we want to risk the raptors. So holding off for the moment? Um, sure. What, what do you think, Lauren? I don't think worldly possessions mean that much. So, oh yeah, right. I forgot that you're like the one that sleeps in the alley. And yeah, stuff. I'm fine moving on. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Let's move on then. Okay. Okay. Um. So, do you want to go back out and go to one of the other doors, or do you want to go up these stairs? Let's go up. Up, 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 and away. Okay. Um, who is pushing that, that doorway open and going up first? That's popping me. Their head through. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, so, so Lauren, um, are you trying to be quiet? Yes. Um, we know that there's been some stuff around here and we know that there's a bone dog in the other room. Yeah. So I'm good. I think I'm going to, you know, pop it up a little bit and see what I can see and then quietly try and lift it up the rest of the way. What are you guys using for light right now? I've got my lantern. Okay. So you've got the lantern, you're holding that up. Got that behind you. Is it an oil lantern or is it a candle lantern? Oil. Okay. Good. So uh, let's let's have you roll that stealth roll then, Lauren. And I'll help if I can. Sure, I'll give you an extra die. He's in need the help. Okay. 
one success, one fail. Okay. One skull, one sword. Uh, so you will get this uh, up and open. Um, it's a little bit as you come in like that room you were just in, uh, more sort of domestic stuff. But the uh, you can see that the there's, again, another set of stairs going up. Uh, but there's a, a wall in here, like it splits this room in two. Like there's another room after this that you will see. Um, and there's like uh, what maybe they had like a, a fire pit or a cooking area or something like that. That's a little bit uh, more formal. That's uh, off to the side as well. Killed, what are you doing? Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. So, so this area splits and we don't see much, basically, right? Looks like you can go and open and look what might be in the other half of this room or go upwards. Hmm. Or you could, could uh, toss this area of the room to see what you find. Yeah. My, my dark secret is I compulsively steal valuables you catch sight of, but I have to catch sight of valuables. That's true. Is there a glint? Or maybe, actually, I, I think maybe... Do you want to, are you going to uh, scout here to see if you can spot something? Sure, yeah, I'll do that. Okay. <laughs> and then if I fail, I'll just say that I, I imagine the glint. <laughs> I, and certainly no GM would, worth their salt would let you do that, but go on. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so three wits, two scouting, three and two. Roll. One success. One success. Um, you will note, as you're kind of looking around at this, that a lot of this stuff is is old. You know how cloth rots and such. Um, leather holds together a little bit well, better, but it does, you know, dry out and curl and so on. You will notice in and amongst the pile of like sacks and other things over by the cooking area that there is a bag, like a cloth bag, uh, with a kind of a, a like a samite golden and silver thread running through it that looks like it's in perfect condition. Oh, yes. I, I think I, I wander close. Okay. Are you, <laughs> is that wandering close and it's going into your pocket or is that wandering close and just checking it out? Yeah, I wander up to it and then it wanders into my backpack. <laughs> then let's have you roll sleight of hand. Okie dokie, slight of hand. And then I'm going to check with your companions. Four, one, slight of hand. One success, one skull. Okay. Um, yeah, you can you can pocket this. It's beautiful. It's, uh, you kind of pick it up. The thing that strikes you when you kind of pick it up is that it's actually kind of warm. Oh. Like there's kind of a, a slight breath of, of, of warm air from the bag as you as you put it into your into your pocket. Oh, cool. Okay. Magic. What, what are you up to, Gavel? You see Hild kind of moving around and checking out the area. There's this door across. There's these stairs up. Um, Gavel, I am... I uh, Lauren has taken the lead and uh, Hild is... is uh, checking things out so i'm just like i'm at guard my sword's drawn i mean it's been drawn presumably yeah. and and i'm just uh i'm waiting for them okay so, um yeah. the thing that will strike you as you kind of stay in there and waiting is is how quiet it is like like there's there's no no definitive sound through here the the, the tower itself seems to to swallow uh some of the noise uh, oh, as you can, can I hear my, can I hear the nanas in my ears going? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. That's interesting. So that means it's like swallowing the sound. It's actually absorbing the sound. Um, are the tracks in here? Uh, yeah. I would say since you spotted those pretty well before, you'll see that the, the scritch marks are around like, like there's this little skittering flying thing that, has has 
gone through here over the years. Okay. Uh, does it? Do they get the sense that there's more than one, or is there just one? Hmm. I I think you've got enough uh, scouting that I'm going to say you think it's just one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Loron. So I think I don't even notice that Hilds, you know, over perusing the wares as it is. As it were. Yeah. I think I'm looking around, and you said that part of this room is, you know, kind of bisected. Yeah. You like know, there, by a wall. There's a, there's a wall with a door in the other half of this area. Oh, uh, so you actually have to open the door to see it? Oh, yeah. Okay. So I think I'm going to go over to the door and start inspecting and make sure that there aren't any tracks like someone's come through, and I'll try the door. Oh, that, that door is seriously bolted ah like, um like you go try to like you know rattle the thing and it like doesn't give i think i'll stop for a second and i'll look back at hill so this isn't locked this is something he that he could oh. pick this is a bolt well it's it's i mean he's hilled his side of hand he might be able to unlock it okay so it, it's significant so i try this and i kind of stop for a second and i turn around and i think hilds finished up with whatever he was doing and I kind of, you know, motion him over. What is it? Um, it's it's a door that we can't open. What's on the <laughs> other side? And I'm going to go over to. You said that there's a stairway leading up from yeah. here. So I'm going to go over to the base of the stairway and kind of hold guard there at the base of the stairway while Hill does his thing. Okay. Sounds good. So let's have you roll that uh, a sleight of hand to to pick the locks. Grab my die. Right. Four and one again. <laughs> Success. So it it takes you a bit. Like someone spent some time. You you have to get the lock itself, and you probably have to get one of your tools and pop something, and then you probably have to force another section out. Um, and when you finally get this open, clearly somebody put. A bunch of stuff against this, uh, like uh, you know, put, put some boards against it, things like that. Like clearly tried to block people from coming through here. Um, so you have to kind of clear the debris away to to move into this next chamber. Yeah, do we want to do that, y'all? Or it would probably make some noise, right? Um. Hild and I are pretty strong. Can we like push at the base of the door just gently and slowly? Like, is it something that's blocking it, or is it like just? Oh, uh, wait, I, what wait, I figured wait. is it is it is opened outward. Like the door is open outward. Um, you kind of pulled it away from the lock and things like that. And it's probably some some boards and things sort of still leaning against it on the other side oh, that you have yeah. to move out of the way. That yeah, but definitely with your strength, you could easily clear that out of the way. Um, are they mounted to the wall? Probably or... a couple of them look like they're nailed, but not particularly solidly. Let's go in. Do you want to go in? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you will move this out of the way and uh, you will uh, step inside and this looks like a more ornate room like the it, it, nicer bed nicer rugs tapestries that kind of thing or at least it would have been 300 some years ago would have been nice um, but you know time and humidity and all of that caused uh, all of this to rot. Um, uh, and you will see sort of seated uh, in a chair uh, across from this uh, doorway is a skeleton in some finery, some robes, uh, kind of seated there. And you can see kind of all around the base, around the feet and legs of this, you'll see the glint of silver and even gold. Excellent. Are there any um, staircases or doors out of here? Did I miss that? 
No, there are no the just the door that you came in. Windows. Yeah, um, I would say uh, we've probably been seeing some windows that have been uh, uh, reflecting the light, uh, you know, out into that courtyard. Though this doesn't have any of those sort of outside window egresses, I would say. This looks like a, a private cha secured chamber with someone in their treasure. Gold. Um, does the, the dust around the skeleton's feet look disturbed? Like... No, and in fact, you won't see any of those feet mark, like the little scratchy, clawy feet marks around in here. Okay, so it does. There's no dis, dust disturbed, like maybe anywhere around the thing, like maybe moving its hands or its, or anything. Or no, it doesn't look like that. I'm gonna go take some gold. So as you head that direction, I'm gonna close the door to the outer area. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Hild, um, let's say that you will see uh, that uh, there is, um, let me, like a really well-made helmet, Ooh. like a beautiful sort of glinting helmet. Um, and then there are silver coins scattered around and about. Um, and you will see classic uh, uh, what looks like to be like a, a golden goblet. Oh. Um, cool. uh, and it, it, it all looks delicious and uh, uh, full of, of potential wealth. Mm. Well, I, I had to take it anyway. I, I have a compulsion. Okay. <laughs> so, Hild, what do you do when, as you grab for, what do you grab for? Um, yeah, I'll let somebody else take the helmet. I don't think I'm super into that. Maybe okay. the, probably the goblet. Okay, yeah, that's going to be worth a chunk. Um, and what do you do when the arm shoots out from the <laughs> skeleton and it grabs onto your hand? Like it comes out and you'll hear that kind of crack. Like it, it hasn't moved before. But you grab its thing, and it that arm comes out to grab onto you. I chop it off. You're gonna uh, try and uh, uh, slash at it with your blade. Yes. Okay. Um, then let's have you do uh, a melee, uh, and uh, then we'll come to gavel. Okay. Okie dokie. And I've got. So I'm going to use the broadsword that we looted previously from that uh, Hobbiton place. That seems right. And so do I get to, I just attack it once, but if there was two things, I could attack both. That is correct. Okay, cool. Okay, so I'll attack it once. And I have a plus two bonus from gear on it. Mm -hmm. And my skill gives me a extra die. Okay, so haha, two hits. Two hits. Um, so you will do um base damage on that is two, right? Yes. Okay, so you'll do three points of damage. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm gonna roll for its armor against that. Um, so it will take two, so you will cut into it with your blade, but it is still up and moving. Like like you nicked it, uh, and it is still uh, still mobile. Um, Gavel, what do you want to do now that this uh, uh, undead servitor has come to life? I, but as soon as I see that, I just I leap into action and I demobilize it. Okay. How are you demobilizing it? With my broadsword. Okay. Uh, then let's have you make that uh, roll. Okay. So it's two skill. My strength, right? Mm hmm. And then two for the sword. Uh, yeah, I think the sword is giving you two extra dice, right? Yeah. Uh, no success. No swords. Okay. Now you have a choice. Do you want to yeah, push it? Push it. Okay. I, so I at the bottom it. it says uh, 
I should say. Uh, yeah, no, I put the button there. I mean, mechanically on my character, what does it do? Oh, Nothing. so what'll happen is when you push it, any swords that you get are going to be great. You're going to get those extra successes. But if you roll any skulls, uh -huh. then that's going to be bad. Like you'll okay. take damage to yourself for that. I rolled one skull. Okay. Did you get any successes? No. Okay. Uh, so you will take one point of strength damage. Okay. Uh, so essentially, as you come up with that sword, it probably knocks your arm aside, you know, and smacks against your uh, forearm as it does that. Loron. So Loron, surprisingly clean from his swim across the lake, <clears throat> reaches into his pouch, into his, like, sack, and pulls out a holy symbol that he's been carrying that he bought back in the city. Okay. And he strikes at this skeleton and i'm going to cast purge undead okay so i'm going to spend i think in this case i'm going to spend two willpower okay but because i'm a half has a uh, half elf that's a third okay and let me roll those dice oh i got two skulls that's not great for you is it it is not i believe that the holy symbol as an ingredient, does something. Uh, increases by one. So the power level increases by one. Okay. So that's going to be power level four, right? Um, yes. Okay. Um, and and it, does, uh, it does strength damage equal to the power level. Okay. Um, so that's going to be four points to it. Can I have you roll just 2d6 and let's read those those things as uh, digits. So yes, first digit I got a second. Uh, a four and a one. Okay. Uh, so uh, you are very lucky because that undead blasting spell also hits gavel oh and he's not undead so it doesn't do anything huh. so that is the that is the luckiest magical mishap you could have gotten there it um, makes him feel super creepy yeah you're like Whoa. what what is it what does that turn undead what does that look like you think um i think that there's this uh flash of light and i think that they actually uh, the the undead crumbles you know, in that area. So, like, if I struck it on the arm, it actually, part of that arm turns, to, that bone turns to dust. And I think that for Gavel, you know, whenever it, uh, whenever the light touches him, I think it feels kind of slimy and cold. Almost as like someone had tossed swamp water on him or something. Yeah, uh, uh, and it's it is super creepy. That, that skeleton collapses to the ground. Um, it leaves behind a set of worn leather armor, uh, and another broadsword, um, uh, probably a nice dagger as well. Um, uh, whatever people want to, to grab up. I spit in the pile of bones and kind of turn back to the stair, to the doorway. Okay. Uh, Fraser, would you roll me, uh, a D66? Sure. Okay. Let's see. Forty-four. So in the Seneschal's pile there is forty-four pieces of silver. Whoa. Okay, so we'll divide it. If we ever get a chance to spend it. Uh, forty-four pieces of silver and that uh, helmet uh, and that gold goblet what what is the helmet like is it the helmet is uh a closed helmet it is armor rating three so does that only go against my head like if they strike me in my head or is my armor rating now five if i were to have it, use it? Uh, let me check i think it just moves your 
armor rating up fully, but let me make sure on that. Helmets 106. Um, uh, armor rating of your uh, helmet um, is added to it. Yeah, so it's uh, going to raise your armor rating up as well. If you get uh, a hit with a critical, uh, it negates head crits. All right, nice. I'm going to do that. Yeah, so you can put this. It's an open-faced helmet, but it still kind of, you know, goes over the back and and sides. So it's kind of like a, the a Roman helmet kind of type. Yeah, yeah. It, it has some some, uh, 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 you know, scroll work and st stuff on it. Um, and you think when it when you get it cleaned up, it's going to be very nice looking. I don't care what it looks like. I just want my <laughs> Head to not have a hole in it. Fair enough. Anymore. Um, and that seems to be what's what's in this room. It looks like this must have been a like a uh, a senior guards person or a seneschal of the the tower that when things went down locked themselves in here with with the goods. Nice. Got the good stuff. So as we walk back out. And we pass by any windows that you had mentioned. I'd like to look through them and see if I can't find. Uh, specifically, I'm looking for like a courtyard or something like that, looking down into an area where that tree might be. I'm going to keep the eye out for the tree that we talked to the end about. Yeah. So you look the any windows you're going to see are going to be up here. We're on the second level, so at the 30, 40 foot mark, you can look outwards. And you'll look out into, you know, the outside around the outside of the tower, and uh, you can see that the the uh, water down below. When you look through windows that are sort of facing inward, you'll be looking down into that courtyard where the mirror lighting, because you're actually looking through what these windows that are reflecting light down into that interior courtyard. It looks like to to, to get to anything else, you need you need to go higher. Ooh. Um, when we look down into the courtyard, do we still see the skeleton of both the dog and the man there? Yeah. Okay, great. Oh, there was a man there too. I only remember the dog. There's a man there, but he's over like like the the brush has overgrown. Like he died uh, sitting against the well, and that the uh, the undergrowth has sort of uh, um, gone over him, vines and such. Can we? I I ask Lauren, can we just fire arrows at the dog from here? I'm it? not sure arrows would work well against the skeleton, but I mean maybe. Um, for now, it doesn't know that we're here, so I think we should keep, you know, going up to see if we can't get a better lay of the land. And you are correct. Piercing weapons are very bad against skeletons in this game. makes sense yep so let's uh, you know i think that lauron goes back to the door and opens it back up and steps out and he's ready to go back upstairs okay taking point again then lauron yeah i think so i mean it worked great the last time and and hild no one's questioned the goblet you've got your 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 silver you know it's awesome Brind wasn't here to see it, so you know you're going to get more of that share. It's the day is looking up for you. Yes. Um, Loron, why don't you make a lore roll for me? Lore. Oh. Okay. Give me just a second. I need to double check. Sure. Okay, that's right. Uh, one success, one skull. 
Okay. So you will, will come up and there's a, a, a window here. Um, and uh, the, the room itself uh, is filled with tables against the walls and apparatus, you know, uh, sort of the metal stuff to hold things up. And, and there are jars of, of liquids and unguents and all kinds of things. All, most of them dried, that kind of dried, cracked look when uh, the interior of the bottles. But there are a lot of these bottles and things around in here. And everything is kind of on these shelves around in here that that the elements have clearly worked on. And so uh, you can see that the, the, the shelves and the tables and things like that are all that kind of nearly nearly rotted wood. And there are just piles and piles of these bottles and things around all over the place in here. Precarious is the word. So I tell them all to be quiet, be careful, because these are probably dangerous and we don't know what they're going to do. So they could, you know, I don't know, eat through the floor or they could explode. So don't touch them. Are there any exits in this door? Just the, no, it doesn't look like, think like this must be the, 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 the top of this particular level. You don't see any stairs going up either. Ah, uh -huh. Um, I th I still think we should go out and look around. Um, do they have uh, so specifically? Once I see this, this looks like an area that they would have books. They, are there any books on the shelves that look like they won't fall apart if you touch them? Yeah, you probably see some bindings, some hardcover books, and things like that. Ooh, okay. So I think I'm gonna head in that direction while everybody else comes up. That's perfect. Could I have you make a move roll for me? Oh yeah. Let's see. Move. Yay. I am awful at that. I rolled two dice and I got two swords. So shockingly, you will start walking through. I mean, uh, uh, imagine that all of these tables are just kind of about to give way. And, you know, as you walk past them, the tables kind of vibrate a little, the, the glass clinks together on these things. Um, and you will move very carefully over through the room until you get to uh, this, this set of books there. Um, and if you want, you can take like the larger volume off the shelf Carefully, Indiana Jones style. Yeah. Slowly, carefully get that off of there. Absolutely. Oh yeah. This the the pages. You can tell you're gonna be want to be super careful with it, but the the binding is nice. It's still intact. Um. Uh. And you know, you guess it's it might be secrets of magic in there. Oh yeah. Um, or or you know who knows what kind of a foul sorcery. Well, if it's foul, I might burn it. But oh, we'll you know. find out about that. Yeah, he'll, he'll look at this room filled with all of these bright, beautiful, you know, bottles and and things. Who knows what they might be worth? Oh yeah, that's good. I'll, I'll have it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to do? Evaluate what is uh, extremely sellable and what is not. Let's have you make a lore roll. Lower, lower, lower. Where you at? Wits. Ooh, not good at that. We'll see what happens. I've got three dice. No, I failed all of them. I'll push it. Nope, I failed all of them and no skulls. <laughs> <laughs> so you're like, I just wait on the far side of the room. See a glint of what looks like might be more gold. Oh yes, I, I go to it. It's probably a beaker full of gold. Um, so I'm gonna have you make your move roll. 
and then we're going to find out what Gavel's doing. Okay, Go, move, move, move. So, by the way, in any of these, could you use your dark secret? Doesn't that add a die or something? Uh, that's your pride. Oh, pride adds a die. Your pride adds. Uh, your dark secret gives you extra XP at the end. Yeah, and it has to be within, like, you, whatever the statement is, that's when you can use it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I failed, but I'm going to push it, and I got one success. Okay. So I think with one success, you can move maneuver through here carefully. Again, that sense of stacked dishes and things like that. Um, and you will get back to this, uh, what looks like some sort of beaker, like some sort of potion container with this golden liquid in it. I drink it. You're ready to pop the lid off of this and drink it. Well, what's it smell like first? <laughs> <laughs> we'll come back to you in just one second. Um, gavel. Yeah. They're 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 you know moving around in this this precarious, dangerous alchemical uh, former lab. Are are there other doorways out of this? No, this seems to be the top of it. Yeah. Um, footprints? Um, I don't... I think you'll see, like, some of the, the, the scurrying footprints uh, uh -huh. around the edges and outside. Like, clearly even it doesn't think going in here is a good idea. Windows? Yeah, there is a window in here. I'm going to go look out the window and see if I can spot Micah. Because I really don't like being in this tower, and sure, so I'm gonna. I, I think yeah about like frolicking with Micah. Yeah, I think you can maneuver over to where the window's at. Let's say it's fairly close to where the door is, and uh, you can look out. And Micah is probably sort of following pace with the ant, like the ant. It's it's worried, um, and you know you've told Micah to stay over on that side. So it's obeying you, but it's clearly not happy about that. Okay. So I put my sword away. I have a dagger, and I'm, like, cleaning my nails as I'm, like, looking out to Micah. Okay. Uh, Lauren, you've got this beautiful book. But, you know, there's so much other stuff here, too. <laughs> I think as I see the other two kind of come into this room... And I see, especially and it gets more in, dangerous when yeah, you have more people in here. Yes, Hilda kind of walks through. I'm like, S -s 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 and I, I'm like, I point back to the door, and I'm headed back to the to go down. Okay, I think now because we have this many people in the room, you're going to need to make a move roll. Oh, nice. Okay, I think that's still. Um, I have no successes, so I'm going to push. Okay. And I got one skull. One skull. So you're going to mark uh, damage on that stat. Uh, and... And I get uh, willpower, right? And you're going to get a willpower for that. And then I'm going to roll myself a couple of dice here. Fun. Let me... Check something. So one of these tables gives way. Like as you come by, your foot just brushes against one of the legs of it. And it does that thing where the leg kind of disintegrates and the whole table tips and everything goes like slushing down um, and starts falling off the table and hitting the floor. Um, and like when the third thing hits, you will see the liquid like kind of all splatters and starts to kind of form together like some kind of gelatinous blob. Um, and it, it is kind of like it is now swallowing the other things that are falling into it. 
Now, here's the problem. Uh, now, you have a Lauron gotten to the door as you knock that down, and, and, and Gavel is by you. However, on the other side of the room with this l yellow liquid um, that smells a little bit like vinegar to you um, uh, uh, is you, Hild. I'll take a sip. Okay, um, so ignoring the, the, the gelatinous thing and going to take a sip of this? Just, just uh, maybe I take a sip just before it happens. Okay. <laughs> it does not taste good. Oh. It's like the Robitussin of uh, uh, like potions here. Do I become a golden goblin? No, you do not. Oh, okay. I guess I better deal with this blob then. <laughs> okay. do, you, do you drink the whole rest of the potion or are you just taking that sip and then stopping it back up? Does it feel like it's doing anything? With a sip? No. Uh, I'll drink it all. <laughs> drink it all. <laughs> all right. Can I please have you uh, make an endurance roll for me, Hild? To see how I become gold and I'll, I'll test that. Okay, so four and two. Four and two. Oh, that's a failure with two skulls. So I think I'll not push that. Not going to push that. Okay. Uh, well, uh, the good news is uh, that uh, you are going to take a, a, a point of strength damage. Oh, that's good. Okay. <laughs> and uh, until uh, uh, a couple of scenes have passed, and we'll just say for the session, uh, you're going to have uh, an epic die added to your strength. Awesome. Yeah. Robotussin's good. Yeah. Um, it is numbing your throat. Like, you can't taste anything. You can tell your sense of smell has gone. Um, uh, and it still does taste like burning. Um, Gavel, you've been kind of you've been cleaning your, your fingernails, kind of watching. Micah, Lauron comes towards you and knocks this stuff off this table and it crashes down and there now is this thing that's forming. So one of the first things I would do would be to like yank Lauron out of the way. Sure. Yeah. Um, and then I, I have no idea how to deal with this thing. I've never dealt yeah. with one before and I've got a zero lore. Um, the only thing that comes to mind is uh, like a fire, but you know, I'm not gonna. Yeah, and uh, 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 unfortunately, Hild has a lantern on the other side of the room. So, what do you want to yeah. do? Um, how big is the room? Um, so the, the room itself is about 20 feet wide and it's about, uh, 30, 40 feet long. Um, can uh, I go, go, go cramped with stuff? Um, imagine that it is packed with, with things. It's a, it's a hoarder's, uh, alchemy lab. Yeah. Um, I kind of want to run over to Hild and how big is Hild? Is he's a tiny goblin to he is, he is a tiny, tiny person, yes. Yeah, so I want to like run over there, pick him up, and run back. Sure. Let's That's have you make impulse. let's have you make a move roll to get over there safely. Okay. One success. One success. So you kind of do the thing where you look and see where the path is. You jump over this thing, run over there. Um, and I think on this action, you can grab up Hild. Yeah. Um, I'm not asking Hild, for permission. Gavel comes running over, leaps, comes over, and clearly uh, attempting to, to save you, grabs you up. What is your reaction to that, Hild? I say I can move just fine, you fool. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah. uh, uh, do you want to try and break out of his hold, or do you want to wait 
and do something to this thing, or do you want to wait for him to run back? What What do you think, Hilden? Then I'm going to come to Lauron. Uh, no, I won't delay our escape by trying to struggle and stuff. Um, I'm trying to think of what I could do whilst being picked up that might help us, but I don't think I have anything that would react like positively or whatever to this could, thing. Could throw the lantern at it. I'm I'm very excited about that possibility. <laughs> yeah. That we have no light afterwards to get down, right? You yeah. can throw the goblet after it. <laughs> oh yeah, no way. You don't, have to, you don't have to throw it. You can swing it at it. Yeah. Could I light um, one of the oil refills on it and throw it at it? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. That's scary. Absolutely. You could absolutely light like an oil wick and throw it in this room full of alchemy reagents. Okay. Sounds good. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so let's have you, I think I'll even let you do that with sleight of hand. Oh, excellent. Okay. Agility for one. Let's do it. Y'all one success, one success. So of course that will go in slow motion across the, the room flipping end over end. And Lauren's eyes get really wide and he looks horrified. Oh, let's see. Uh, Frazier. Why don't you roll me a d6? One d6 or two? Let, one d6. Let's let's die of fortune uh, to see, you know, how how bad it is or how good it is. A two. <laughs> so, Lauron, this wick hits that thing and it goes up, <laughs> and uh, it fills that end of the room with fire just kind of and that sort of green and blue of magical flame and stuff burning um uh and lauren what do you do so the two of them are on the other side yes and i'm They're here with have the door. two choices they could try and run through the flames uh, or they could try to to get out the window and climb around the outside to get to another window. Well, I want them to. I want to encourage them to come this way. So okay. I'm going to take out my water skin, and I'm going to empty it where the flames are. Okay. Hopefully, um, it's not a grease fire. <laughs> it may be. I I think that. Um, what do you think is the appropriate role for this? Do you think it's lore to kind of know what you're doing? Yeah, I, that sounds right. Yeah. Just to represent that you you know it's not a grease fire, or we're going to find out that it is in a yes. second. Um, one sword, one skull. Okay. Um. So I yeah I I will say you can you will you won't have a water skin. Essentially, your your water will be used up for the moment. Um, but you'll be able to to douse it and reduce the difficulty. Essentially, it s sprays it and clears a little bit of space, meaning that uh, um, uh, Alejandro, if you want to, you can can leap through. Um, just make uh, a simple move roll. I do want to. Yeah. Let's see it. Two skulls, one sword. Two skulls, one sword, but one sword is enough because your friend has diminished the flames, and you will go leaping through with Hild through these flames, and uh, you guys can can move out of this area, and that room is going up. Yeah, um, you know, and you can kind of feel that sort of blast furnacey heat rolling out of there as that thing you hear as things are popping uh, in there. Yeah, probably the skeletons didn't hear anything though. <laughs> you're up you're up on the third floor from where they're at, so yeah. That um, could happen. That could happen. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's take our break. Um and uh we'll continue now that you've let lit the tower on fire. Um yeah. and we'll see what happens. Um, how long? Uh let's take uh let's take 
Uh, da, 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 seven minutes. Okay.
Hello, I'm starting to get the Kickstarter for Vale Inheritance ready too. Oh, awesome. Going to try to launch next week. Next week? Yeah, because I want to do it before the notifications uh, are killed in G+. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, I was originally going to wait maybe another week, but I was like, that's probably a couple hundred dollars. We're we're thinking we're going to push it back to to I think May to let the sort of the zine fatigue end. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and when I looked at May for last year for RPG stuff, there wasn't too much stuff, so I don't think it uh, too much stuff in our lane. Right. So I don't think that's going to be too bad. Cool. Yeah. All right. So you've gone through this door that was to the east. Um, you've gone up to sort of the top level and you've set the top level on fire. Uh, and you've kind of come back down, down these stairs, back down to the second level. Um, um, now it's a good thing the fire's up above, um, you know, cause, uh, uh, it'll take it a while to get back down and the smoke's not going to start flooding down here. Um, so you're good for a little while. Um, so how do you three want to proceed then? I say we just keep going down, right? Okay. Yeah, you can head back down to the the uh, ground level uh, and head back out to that courtyard. Yeah, should we keep exploring? <laughs> so here's a couple of questions. Yes. Tell us what this what exactly this fire means. We close the door. Is it going to burn itself out? Is it going oh, to spread no. to the It's going no, to spread no. everywhere. Well, here's the problem is a, a normal fire you might be able to judge, yeah, it's going to spread because there of course are some wood, old oak and wood that are on these places. Um it's also a magically I mean it's got all this alchemical stuff. You have no idea what that's going to do to it. You know that 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 might cause explosions. It might get hot enough to melt rock, uh, that kind of thing. Um, plus, it's got that window and to get oxygen in. So it's it's not going to uh, burn itself out. And but that's going to be a while. And whenever we top, top level of this place, when you say be a while, you mean like five minutes, or you mean like a few hours? That's all going to depend. Yeah. on that alchemical room. It might okay. be a few hours. It it might be less. Okay. Can I make a lore roll based off of the heat that we felt as we came down to give me an idea about how much, how fast this will burn? Let, that sounds like a really interesting use of lore. So yes. Okay. Um, and whenever we come back down, what's going on in that courtyard with the other things? Well... I think the noise and the popping and stuff, you will definitely see that there is a big skeletal Irish wolfhound that is pacing around. Um, you kind of peek out and you see it is pacing and looking around. Okay. Uh, so on my lore roll, I rolled a sword and two skulls. Okay. You think you probably got about an hour before things are going to get hairy here. Because here's the thing is, there are four floors to this, right? You got up to the third floor. In here at the top above you on the tower, you see the, the underside of the fourth floor. So what's prob what, what may well happen is if it starts burning and causes destruction, this interior thing may start to come down if it breaks the support structures that are holding that fourth floor up in the tower. I see. That sounds, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So yeah, you get down to this to the bottom floor. Um, you know your your clothes probably smell like smoke, uh, um, you know, kind of hanging on there. Uh, and there's there is a skelly dog um, out out in the courtyard. Do we attack it? Sneak up and attack? You could. Do you want to stealth up on it and try and uh, disable this uh, uh, dog? Is that what? Um... Is that what you guys want to do? Do you want to attack, or do you want to try to sneak by, or what's most interesting to you? 
I don't think we're going to be able to sneak by. We have to get past this dog at least to get out. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll just sneak up and attack. Okay. With that dog. Huh? Huh? Yeah. Uh, so uh, then I think let's have you make, since Hild, you've got the, 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 the stealth thing. Essentially, we'll assume that you're moving up to get in the position to attack it, to get that silent strike, and then have the sure. others follow up. Sure. Can I help him? Um, I don't think so for this, for where he's moving up to, to stealth to, to get into position. Two gear, guys. Kaka. I got two successes. Got, okay, so you've got two successes on your stealth. So you get up on this thing and kind of moving through the undergrowth here. Um, you see that other skelly that's on the well. You guess mm -hmm. it's a regular skelly because it's not moving. You probably see a glint of metal on it. Um, but you will kind of move yourself position so you can attack this, this skeleton dog and then have your friends follow up. So you're going to be the first attacker. Cool. Okay. <clears throat> and I'll also spend one more for an additional success. Okay. Just in case. Okay. Let's have you roll that attack roll. Okay. Attack four. Nice. Two successes. So five successes. Five successes. Yeah. And your base damage is? Two. Two. So that's six points. Less one for its uh, uh, my successful armor roll. Uh, means that you, you like crack into it and it staggers back. Like it's thrown by, by your strike. Um, and it's that doing that kind of wobble. Like it's just about to, to collapse. From, oh. from just the absolute, you know, uh, a precise nature of your blow there. I actually forgot to roll the epic die, too. <laughs> well, then let's have you roll the epic die. Is that the... Oh, That's I the see. blue one. Cool. Okay, I'll just roll that. Let's see what happens. I have two swords. <laughs> <laughs> so when you hit this thing, with your sword, the others are kind of getting in position. When you hit it, there is that thing where your blow strikes it and it shatters bone and splinters it. And with one strike, your goblin pops up out of the grass, and then and shatters the skeleton dog. Yeah, if anyone's watched Chrono Trigger, it's the <laughs> it's the move with the frog where it jumps up and goes down with the sword directly. That's a dragon knight. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, that looked unnatural and weird uh, to you, uh, uh, Gavel and uh, Lauron, but he did successfully shatter the dog. Good job. <laughs> I think Lauron steps back a little bit from Hild and is eyeing him closer. It so must have been something I drank. <laughs> so you have a choice now. You could go to that northern door that the dog was by, or you can go by to the western door. Um, or you could leave. Hill, didn't you see metal near the other skeleton? Oh, did I? Yes. Oh, then I go there. <laughs> um, you will see that this guy, a figure, hard to tell if it's a man or a woman, they died so long ago, been overgrown in there. Um, their coin purse is probably split open, and there are some ancient coppers that have piled out of that. But you will also see that on their hands, on their wrists, there are these metal, like flexible metal loops on their wrists with these little, 
how do I put this? Uh, little silver bells on them. It looks like yeah. they have one on each wrist. Strange. Maybe I'll ask Lauren if they know what this is. Maybe it's something magical. I, I don't know why anybody would wear bells on their wrists. Laura, do you want to make a lore roll? I sure will. Sure will. Let's see. I got two swords. <laughs> two swords. Um, these are magical bells for dancers um, and acrobats. Um, essentially, they are a rare treasure uh, used by them. Uh, it means that you can't be stealthy when you're using them. Um, but they also give you an epic die uh, to your move. Ooh, okay. Oh, no, stealthy though. Psh, that's if you want them, Lauren. That's for you. Um, I'm going to give Gavel first chance. I got this nice book. Look, Gavel got the helmet already. Uh, okay, yeah, I'll take these. Okay, that sounds good. What do they do mechanically? They, um, they give... give you. An... Oh, go on. They give you an epic die in your move. Oh, in your move. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but you can't be stealthy when you do it. Yeah. I just so, that I'm, I'm more stealthy than you, so I don't want those. Yeah. yeah. So let's go uh, through the door where the guard was guarding. I think we're okay for a small bit of time. Okay. We can't take our time. We have to rush through this. <laughs> yeah. I like how Steven says that it just does a little smirk. <laughs> uh yeah, so uh you will uh let me get to my notes here. Uh you will move over here to, to that door. That door is locked. I think it's it's the the act of a moment for you to, to get this unlocked. Um you can hear up above maybe the crack and pop of of things uh, as that gives. And you will come in to what looks like a uh, uh, like an audience chamber. The floor here is beautiful tile. Um, uh, uh, cracked in a few places, but otherwise, Brilliantly done. Um, uh, a mosaic here. Um, and you can see that sort of as you come in this door, um, uh, across the room is uh, like a marble chair. Um, and there is the, uh, a, a pair of stairs on either side of it that go up to the next floor. Um, there are probably candelabras in here. Might have been tapestries at one point. It looks like some sort of audience chamber. Lots of sorceress symbols and things around on this. Um, and then the other thing is uh, these roots that seem to have kind of bulged down from above that have come down, pushed between the bricks from the ceilings above that have run down into here and then go into the tile of this floor. Um, and they're kind of black uh, with this weird, like black bark with kind of a reddish undertone to them. Um, and uh, uh, you will see kind of pulling up from the floor um, these four skeletal warriors will rise up. Um, and you can see that the roots kind of run inside those skeletons. They're like flowers coming out of their mouths and leaves. And it's like the roots are kind of puppeting them up. And as, as, soon, as soon as you kind of, kind of open the door and the light comes in, they will begin to rise. We, we just closed the door. <laughs> you can do that. Well, do you do you want to try to take on four skeletons? I mean, I would say it takes a while, but in these games, it's like six seconds around, right? So <laughs> it was so easy for you the last time to see what you're concerned with. These are obviously very easy. 
skeletons to deal with. And I think that this these roots lead us towards that tree. Do we want to help the ant or not? Oh, right. <laughs> I, I definitely do. Well, yeah. we might be helping it already. It's just taking a long time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm done with whatever you want to do. If you want to take on the skeletons, or yeah, let's go this way. Okay. All right, Lauren. I I heard you talk there. I'm going to have you start. Fantastic. Um. So the roots are kind of coming up from the ground and moving, kind of puppeting these uh, yeah, skeletons. They are along. still undead. Okay. Well, I think what I want to do. Uh, um, do I think I can attack these roots directly? Meaning, can I chop the roots off and it impact them? Or will another root just pick up? Or should I try that? You're not sure. You think that, that that's probably, if you're going to just physically attack it, that's what you're going to have to do is either shatter the skeletons or break the, break the root. Okay, so I'm going to take my staff and I'm going to try and attack the skeletons. Okay. Then let's have you make a melee roll. Okay. So I rolled one skull, and that's uh -huh. it. So I All think right. I'm going to stick with that. Okay. No, I'm going to push that because that gets me more willpower. Yes. And it will break my staff. Um, so I had that one skull, and I got one success. Okay. And the one skull is on the black die? It is. Okay. Then, then that yes, that will break your staff. Okay. Uh, but you do get a success as you break it. Um, how much damage does the staff do? Uh, one. Okay. So you move up to the skeleton that you're on, and you will smack it with this hard. And it does st step back for a second, and then you see it turn and move towards you, um, uh, uh, pulling essentially its short blade up. Um, killed. There are uh, four skeletons, and one of them has been dinged. Yeah, I'll go for the dinged one. Okay. I guess, yeah, going into the shadows is probably not an option. <laughs> They've seen me, probably. Pro you think so? You open the door, you've got the silhouette of the light behind you. Yeah, I don't think I could disappear into that. Even I'm not that good. Although I am golden at the moment. So, yes. <laughs> okay, so I will attack melee. Okay. Don't forget your extra die. Right. I've got that four, one gear dice. I get. Plus two from that, and then. The extra die that I get from sword thing goes in the red one, right? Uh, the sword fighter's mean, talent. Oh yeah, that goes into the red. Yeah. Boom. Okay, I got two successes on my epic die and one skull. Okay, so that's two successes. That's three points of damage, right? Um. Yeah. The base. The base is two damage. Okay. Um. So that will shatter the one that. Lauren already hit. Do you want to use your new ability and strike a second target? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Woo. Hee -hee. That's cool. <laughs> so it's just same roll, right? Yeah. Okay. Roll. Oh, crap. So I got five successes and one skull. Five successes. Well, let me roll its armor. I wonder if this epic one rolls right. Every time I've rolled it, I've gotten at least one success on it. <laughs> uh, it rolls right for me. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, tell me what that looks like when you cut down one and then spin. And, and w w what do we see? So, I think what happens is I, I come up from the side and then I dig. Uh, since it's a broadsword, it's quite long. So, I actually dig it. Uh, into its rib cage and into the other's rib cage, and then I twist it and like I don't know, maybe my veins pulse out or something with this liquid, and then I just like twist it and they like, just shatter. Absolutely. So they these two are done. Of the four that were there, there are only two left. By the time that you can move up and strike one of them, Gavel. Well, I will do that. 
let have you roll Malay. Uh, I failed. I mean, I didn't fail. I didn't get anything. Then do you want to push it? Yeah. Okay. Two successes. Two successes. Um, and base damage on that is two. Um, so you do three points of damage. So this thing, where do you hit it? Um, I go for the, I'm going for like the spine, like through the ribs, hitting the spine. Yeah. And you cut deep into it. Like, like you smash part of it and you cut deep into that root and you will see this kind of, uh, uh, reddish, like super dark reddish sap kind of run from it. It's barely holding itself together. Um, as it's going to take its swing at you, which is that. Um, you may, if you wish, um, parry. Okay. Uh, which means rolling your melee. It's just my melee and not, nothing else? Oh, it's a, your melee plus your strength. Okay. Um, if you have a weapon bonus, you can also roll the bonus for your weapon. Two fails. Two fails. So uh, it will hit you for two points of damage. Okay. Um, and you may roll your armor dice. And any sword you get on the armor dice will negate uh, a point of, the, uh, of damage. Okay. So my armor is gear? Yep. One success. One success. So you'll only take one point of strength damage then. And the, the other one is going to swing at you, my goblin -y destroyer. Um, so uh, I will, will roll for that. I say, I say, quick, give me the helmet. <laughs> um, I go flick ahead. It at him. <laughs> Dunk. Uh, do you want to parry? Oh, if I parry this time, then I can't strike next time? No, so uh, it means you can't move and strike next time. Am I in range of them? Uh, this one has moved up on you, so yes. Okay, yeah, I'll try to do that. Okay. If there were more targets here, it would be more of a, a difficult decision. Right, right. But you cleared the deck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I have plus one parry from second uh, sword fighter thing. Uh-huh. So is it just like a melee thing, though? Yeah, you just roll melee. Okay. Uh, okay, so it's the exact same roll, I think. Cool. But choosh. I got one success. One success. So it will hit you uh, for two points of damage. What's your armor? Armor. That's a good question. I have leather armor bonus two. Okay, so roll two dice. If you get any successes, you can reduce damage by one for each. Okie dokie. Now I got two fours. Okay, so you'll take two points of strength damage. Arg. Essentially, it swings and cuts with this sort of rusted blade deep into you. Um, and you will see that your blood is kind of running sort of red and gold right now. Oh, cool. I only have one point left though so oh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah and it won't be as cool when you come down off of this high either but anyway um lauron let's swing back to you uh there's an untouched one who's just swacked your goblin compatriot um and there's a badly wounded one that is on uh gavel and i can tell that hild isn't doing very well i mean has hit the crap out of things, but isn't doing very well. So I'm going to step up behind Hild, and I'm going to uh, try to heal him. Okay. How much you spending? Um, I'm going to spend one. Okay. Because there might be more healing coming. But because I'm a half-elf, that's two. So, okay. And I'll roll two dice. And I got, oh, I got a skull. All right. So you still get a mishap. Yes. Um, but you do heal him for uh, healed for two points. Mm -hmm. Why don't you roll me a D66? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we love this uh, mishap. 
It it accidentally kills the skeleton. It is a two and a four. Twenty-four. Um, you take one point of damage to your agility as it drains your energy away from you. Sorry. That's, that's great. My agility was one, so now it's zero, so I think I'm broken. Yes. Um, so let me see what breaking on agility does. Since we haven't encountered this yet before. So um, when uh, that happens, you collapse from exhaustion. Essentially, you can only crawl or wheeze. You can't perform any other actions and you can't roll for skills. So essentially, you heal him and collapse. Okay. <laughs> um, healed. Your healer drops. Shit. <laughs> I attacked the skeleton. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll your attack roll on the skelly. Oh, man, we should have like bought some potions or something. Uh, <laughs> okay, so, okay. One thing at a time. Uh, four. Oh, yeah, let's do that. So that's actually... uh, four successes. Four successes, and so even with its dodge, uh, taking it down, so that's three successes. So that's four points of damage. So yes, you will you will kill this thing. Um, <laughs> Chapa or ooh, I I like put my broadsword down on its head and then twist it off. Poof! That will pop its head off like a daisy. Um, um, and uh, let's come to to gavel. Wish to finish off your skeletal foe before he can strike at you? Yeah, nothing, so I'm going to push. Okay. Two swords, one skull. Okay, so you'll take uh, one point of strength damage, and you will cut this thing down. You finish hacking through the root of this. Yeah, yeah. coming through the other side. Absolutely. And there are, there, you know, there's that sort of, you know, tentacle-like roots that are kind of just you know, shivering around in here. Um, but the actual sort of animated skeletons are, are done. Um, what, what do you want to do? Your, your healer is on the ground. Yeah. Do we have healing? I don't have healing. Let's I'm going to go to him and ask him what I can do. If maybe he has something that I could use on him. I do not there. I, I, I haven't seen any healing for anything like a potion or something like that. Not yet. Nope. Yeah. Um, uh, do you have a, uh, you can make a healing skill check. Um, I do have healing. Well, no, you can't because right. you can't make skill checks. So I could potentially help someone. Oh no, you can't. No, no, no. no. Oh, that's right. Cause I can't make skill checks. Okay. Can't make skill checks. Okay. I yeah. don't, I, I don't have the skill, uh, oh, but I have empathy. Yeah. Uh, so you could roll empathy. We have the same odds, man. Go for it. <laughs> now I do want to say this is a fail forward game, but it also, if you go and you do something and you fail, bad things do happen. Lauren, uh, how do you feel about me helping you? Um, I think I saw some herbs out in the courtyard that I can use. Oh, well, in general, you. Should not leave me in a old ruined castle burning down. <laughs> so whatever you can do sounds great. Well, we could All just right. drag you out instead of trying to heal you. What's the yeah, fun in that? Can, yeah, you, can go hang, you can go <laughs> hang out with um the, with Micah and and Darren. I forgot what his character's name was. Brind. Brind. And Brind. Yeah. Alright, I'm gonna do it. Okay, let's have you roll. Nothing. Can I push? Yeah, you can push. One sword. You are very lucky. You're very lucky. <laughs> I, was, I was hoping for snake eyes on that one. But anyway, um, so you will get back one point of agility. Okay. And that's, you kind of, it helps you, get you up, get you, give you some water, catch oh. your breath, you're shaky. How does dark secret work? Uh, uh, dark secret is when that interferes with something at the end. Uh, 
you can get some extra experience from that. Okay. Let me see here. What it says about the dark secret. Um, buh, 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 buh. 39. Did you suffer because of your dark secret? Which I, I don't think so in this case. Okay. Well, that's why I'm acting. Yeah. Um, by the way, I'm at one uh, strength. Okay. If you want to heal me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Sure. I'll heal you. So I'll do the same thing. And let's see what kind of mishap let's I get. Let's see if you can time. do the same thing then. Yeah. Um, so I will spend one willpower. That gets me two willpower. Yeah. And then I'll roll that. Two healing. And I rolled a skull. Uh, <laughs> then please roll me a D66. I rolled a 26. 26. Your magic hurts your body and you suffer one point of damage to strength. Okay. Oh. I can take that. But, um, Gavel, you will get back two points. Okay, so at this point, Laura, do you want to continue or, <laughs> or what? Well, I don't think we should leave the evil tree here. So... Yeah, well, I think this place is going to burn down regardless. <laughs> we can help it, I guess. Yeah, you're definitely hearing the popping and the cracking uh, from up above. Can we light the tree roots? I mean, what happens if we put a torch to them? They're like a, uh, uh, a, like a tree. Like if you were to put yeah. a torch to tree roots, the, it wouldn't go. Yeah, it's... It... It scorches it, but doesn't necessarily right. light it. I will tell you what you can tell is, given what you're seeing about how the roots are tapered, and given what you've seen, you're guessing that that tree must be up on that fourth floor. Oh, shit. So the first thing that's going to burn. Is, um, are the little dancing bird lizard thing footprints around here? Yes. Go? Um, I think we need to keep moving forward. I mean, it might be able to stop the fire. I mean, we don't know how powerful this is. So, Right. So up okay. the stairs behind the, the thing? I wonder what would happen if we hacked the roots here, like near the ceiling. If we hacked the roots here and cut them off, that might uh, help us in defeating it when we reach it. That would certainly take some time. An hour? <laughs> Not an hour, but it would take a bit. What, you what kind of weapons do these? I'm sorry, what? A short swords. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to pick up a short sword. Okay. Then to replace my broken staff. That seems yeah. fair. Yeah. Maybe later I can fix it for you. I have crafting. Oh, you have crafting too, right? Yeah. So. Maybe I can help you. <laughs> but, well, I guess so. Do people want to go up the stairs then? Yeah, let's go up the stairs. Okay. Did you search this room? Not yet, but I don't. Do we have time for it? You can do a quick glance around, can't you? Sure. This was the one with like a big throne room, right? Yeah. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> it might be worth. I this. didn't want to steal that from you. If yeah. Okay, I'll I'll search. All right, then let's have you uh, let's have you make a scouting roll then. Scout, scout, scout. Two, it's three and two. One sword. Uh, so you'll find uh, essentially probably about six silver worth of coins in here, scattered amongst the roots and things. Sweet. Those skellies hoarding those coins. Um, you go, you can go up either side of these stairs. They come up to a, a wide landing. Uh, there is uh, a door off to your left and a door off to your right, and also a spiral, tight, very tight spiral staircase that goes up to the next floor. Shall we? Continue up. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, those doors are probably like bedroom chambers for like the 
king and queen or something. You will move up to that next floor, that third floor, and there's definitely smoke in here. Like because this is adjacent. Now you're adjacent to that room that's burning. You can the smoke is coming in through there. Again, we've got those roots. Um, uh, the heat is up in here, um, uh, and it's pretty, pretty prodigiously warm here and and smoke filled. Um, and there is another set of stairs going upwards. And this room has furniture and stuff like that in it. This is a landing kind oh, of. Okay, uh, a landing. Thing. Yeah. Okay. Continue so, up. Yeah, let's go upstairs. I'm gonna wrap a piece of like rip a piece of thing off my tunic and wrap it over my mouth and nose. Sure. Can I have everybody please make an endurance roll for me? You're not going to do that. Uh, one success. One success. I got two. Uh, two successes? What did you get? One success. So you kind of will cover your mouth and hold it and get up through this, and you will come out up and out into light, like daylight. And you will see that, um, you know, how the, the courtyard is wide around. This is actually a little bit wider than that. Um, the tower, like, uh, 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 walls go another 10, 12 feet around. Um, you can see that there are a variety of markings, sigils and things, you know, etched and kind of glowing in red around the outside and you'll see in the center of this is this enormous blackened tree that clearly the tree that has those roots going down uh, into, into the thing. And you can see that it's got leaves that look like maybe they're made of like, like felt or something. Um, like definitely like bird, uh, uh, not like birds, but like with burrs on them, you know, how trees get that sort of, you know, prickly kind of leaves. Um, and they're also, they're red with sort of black outlines, big trunk. But the thing that you will notice is sort of in the midst of that, it looks like someone has sunk a person into the tree. And you can kind of make out a face and maybe shoulders. And they're definitely made of bark. Uh, like they become part of this tree. And you can almost, can almost read the situation here. 300 years ago, Sorcerer's Tower closed off. How do you survive? How do you keep yourself alive? And you merge yourself with this tree. Yeah, become like a tree and leaf. Um, anyway, uh, and as you come up, the you can see that off to uh, the the uh, eastern side, there is smoke pouring up through there. Like that section is is clearly burning and starting to give over there. But you come up, and this thing has lashing roots. And it knows you're coming. Um, so tell me, what do you do? This is effectively a massive ent made of magic up here on top of this. But corrupted by a sorcerer. Yes, the sorcerer is the ent. Can the roots attack us from where they are? Absolutely. Um, can I shoot? An arrow at the figure? Absolutely. Does it take that's... an empathy check? No, because that's not going to kill it. Uh, so go ahead and make your uh, marksmanship roll. Uh, two 
skulls and one sword. Okay, so that will hit. What's the base damage of this thing? One damage. One damage. So uh, you will sink that into it, and it bounces off the bark. Like that shot, you let it go, and it, boom, bounces. So I have a question. Is this like there was an end here, and then there was a sorcerer here, and then the sorcerer put themselves inside the end? Yeah, like melded itself magically with this ent. Man, Probably, the ent is dead, long dead. The sorcerer yeah. possessed it to keep itself alive. What an asshole. Okay. And the sorcerer is, is facing us, right? I yeah. That. Yeah. Yeah. And that arrow bounces off of it. Hilled. What do you do? Um gee whiz. I think I will. I think the only thing I can do is charge at it and broadsword it. I don't really have a a good way to go about attacking it, I think. So you're going to run up and attack it? Yeah. All right. Let's have you roll. <laughs> well, I was like super excited about it, too. <laughs> okay. I'm glad to be part of this plan. <laughs> yeah, exactly. For... Cure dice. Epic. I got one, two successes. Two successes. So that's going to be three points, right? Uh, yeah, it does base two. Okay. Uh, so yeah, you will run up and you'll swing and you, you catch it at a weak point and you do cut into it, but not that deep. Yeah. This one has bark. Loron. So I have, I think, three options, but they're all stretches. So I'm going to sure. tell you, um, and you can tell me no. One is would be to roll lore and see if I could figure out a weakness. A second would be to use animal handling and see if I could calm it. <laughs> I think the second I'm going to say no to now. Perfect. And the third would just, if I don't think the that the, the knowledge thing the lore thing would help any would just be to whack at it with a torch with torch or you certainly this thing is kind of an undead that's another option uh so it is undead is it uh it's not a demon right correct okay because i have something weird about demons <laughs> well i think i'm going to do the lore thing first okay And I got one success and one fail, but wait, I might be able to do better. That is my wits. Sure, I'm going to push that. Okay. See if I can get more. Nope, I didn't get any more. Okay. So this thing is going to be very tough. Like, I'm going to tell you right now, this thing is enormously tough. Uh -huh. um, if if you had some things to, to that were, were made to, to deal with it, that might have been been awesome uh, and assisted you uh, in OSR module kind of way. Um, uh, but um, you do know that fire will do more damage to it, but it's still awfully tough. Um, do I think it'll get away from the spreading fire? Oh, no. No, you've lit this tower on, on fire with okay, magical so it's, fire. It's dead. The most we can do, I mean, eventually, the most we can do is let it kill us too. Yeah. Now that you've seen it up here, now that you have a sense of what's going on with it, and you've seen it, you're like, this thing is going to get, when this tower goes, it's going to be destroyed. Fantastic. Okay. And I, so I tell them that. I tell all of them, it's gone anyway. We have to get out safe. Okay. So now it goes. All right. <laughs> One. Okay. All right. Uh, so that is seven dice. Okay. Everybody is going to take two points of wits damage. Essentially, it bellows out at you and 
just lets loose with this roar, just just echoes through here. Um, and then for its second action. All right. All right. So you may dodge this attack, um, Hild, which is a move action to dodge. Uh, you can't because you can't parry it. So what happens if you don't have move? Just agility. I can still try it. Just agility. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll try that. I would like to not be hit. I got two successes. Well, then you will dodge away as one of these branches comes swinging past you and nearly hits you. You, it, it, I rolled two successes, so you just got out of the way of that. The other person it's going to swing at is you, Lauron. If I could have you make a move roll. Awesome. I have no move. I have agility. And I have those little jingle bell things. All right, that's an epic die. So that's one of the blue ones? Yep. Okay, make sure I got that right. That's not good. Um, I did not get anything, so I'm going to push. Okay. Oh, and I got a success and a skull. So one point of agility damage. And that breaks me again. Okay. Um, and one success means that uh, you will negate one of its hits. You'll take one point of damage. You may roll your armor against that. Is that strength damage? Yes. Okay, I'll do that. Okay. But I collapse. Yes. So it swings. After it bellows, it swings. It healed, healed, nimbly judges, uh, jumps out of the way. And then at the backhand, uh, uh, it, it goes to swing and just catches... Lauren and Lauren crashes to the ground. What do you want to do, Gavel? I throw Lauren over my shoulder and I run down the stairs. Okay, I'm going to have you make a move roll so we get a sense of of how far you're going to get. Okay, one success. One success. So essentially, you grab him, run, run down those stairs, and essentially get through that third floor, and you're you're heading down onto that second floor. Um, even as you're hearing the rending, as those roots are kind of tearing up out of the stones to try and get you guys as you go down, killed. What are you doing? I hurl my lantern at it, and I say, "Your fate is coming, evil one!" And then I run away. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, let's have you make a move roll. Okay, cool. Uh, okay. So just agility again. Come on, baby. No, that is a failure and two skulls, so I'm not going to push it. <laughs> okay. So uh, it is going to take a swing at you. Let's see what kind of thing it's going to do. So it's going to do that. Um, Does my you lantern may hurt it? <laughs> Yes, there's more fire here for it. Um, but I'm going to need you to roll the dodge. Okay. As it throws one of its roots and tries to grip and crush you to death. <laughs> okay. Oof. No, that's another failure. How much? I have four agility. I'm going to push it. Okay. Oh, I failed and took one damage. Can it your will willpower do something? No, my willpower is just for sneaking. Okay. It must have been Brins that he could change successes into things yeah. or something. I need you to roll your armor. Okay. Also, if I ever suffer a critical injury, I can re-roll once. Because <laughs> I'm lucky. Good. Um, okay, so roll armor, you said? Yeah. Okay, two of those. No, no, no. I gotta... You're going to take three points of damage. Oh, shit. I think I'm down. <laughs> yeah. Does that drop you? Yeah, it drops me. <laughs> I went from three to zero. All right. Um, in that <laughs> case, why don't you roll me 2d6? Essentially a d66. Okie dokie. Uh, 36. 
36. So I'm going to tell you what that critical result is. Okay. And then you tell me if you want to reroll. Okay. <laughs> so blunt force critical. Uh, so you said 36? Yeah. Okay. Hit you in the groin. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you take one additional damage for every move or melee roll. Oh, that sounds bad right now. Uh, then you may re-roll. Okay. I have 44. 44. Breaks your arm. Two-handed weapons can't be used. Oh, okay. That's okay. I don't have any two-handed weapons. <laughs> yeah. um, and let's see. When you are broken with that... And strength is the worst one to break, I think. Yes, and that's yeah, that's the only one that does the the critical uh, injury thing. Good and thing I'm one, lucky. One oh seven. Um, you can crawl. Good, good. Yeah. Can't perform any actions. You can't roll for skills. Okay, I'll just crawl out of there when I can. Then. <laughs> okay. Um, you look. You look back gavel and Hild's not following you. So I will in one motion roll Lauren down the stairs as I turn around and okay. run back up. All right. Here is the point at which I'm going to be a, a gentle GM, re relatively gentle GM, in that I think Brind, having seen the smoke, will have come running up um and we'll we'll grab Loron. Um, but at this point he's gonna move at the pace of uh the group. So Gavel, I need you to make another move roll to to get up there, get him and get back down. One success. One success. Grab onto him, yank him up, run back down, get back down to that second floor. Let's see what it will do here. Um, I roll a d6 for its attack type. Roll. Uh, Gavel, you may make a move roll to dodge. Two successes. Two successes? So it another one of these roots comes out and like smashes the stairs behind you as you run down to that next floor. You probably have to make that jump to, to get down. Um, you dodge out of the way, but you still got healed in your thing. Um, at the building, you can hear the cracking of the starting to give upstairs. That lantern probably pushed it over the top. You know, it's starting to, to that oil is on it. Starting starting to catch one more move roll to get out of here before it can make another attack on you. Oh, two successes, two failures. So you're going to stick with the two successes, right? Of course. Uh, so tell me what that looks like. What do we see on screen? Bryn's got, Lauron is running desperately. Yeah. What do we see of you? I have uh, held over my shoulder. I've got, I'm holding that rag over my face. And I'm just, I'm like, I'm running through. Um, I catch up with Hild and Loran and I, and I help like on the other side of Loran. And so, so it's um, uh, Loran and what, what's uh, Bryn and Bryn. Yeah. So we're both like just holding Loran and, and I've got Hild and we're just running out of there. He will run out, get outside of this thing, um, a green screen. We see as you get out of the, the thing, we can see that interior collapse down. And at that point, it becomes like, like a chimney, you know, like, like, where, like, uh, uh, because all of that burning will catch in that plume. It will draw the oxygen and it will start just immolating this thing and just ignites and blackened smoke will come roiling out of this. As you come out, Hild is vomiting up golden liquid at this point. Um, 
and yeah, uh, the, the the tower will burn, uh, uh, and uh, uh, it will probably take an hour, um, but eventually it will just collapse. Um, with I mean, just red hot stones. Do like, I hear it screaming? Oh yeah, it screams for a long time. And I'm just like on the ground, all crippled and stuff, and I'm like. <laughs> Eventually, there's just a smoldering pile of like a red hot kiln that has collapsed in on itself. Um, and you will see the ant come st now striding across the water, clearly, whatever was keeping it back uh, is gone. Uh, and it will will come over and, and essentially offer to carry you all back across. I kind of tell the ant, I'm very sorry. Your sister was dead, was killed by the sorcerer. We destroyed it with the worst thing possible for you. Mm. Okay. I like... I like that if we hadn't accidentally started a fire, we probably would have all just died. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you they will carry you back across. Um, you, you'll heal up, and you will head back to Hallows. Um, and I think that's the point at which we move to epilogues, actually. So you come back pretty wealthy, you guys, from this. Not as wealthy as you could have been, not by half, um, but but pretty substantially wealthy. And and the Hallows will respect you, especially when an Ent carries you back to the town and drops you off. Um, that's certainly bragging rights. Um, so what what's your epilogue gavel? Um, I head out with the Ent. And we, uh, uh, I, I, um, learn new abilities. I, I, I start learning uh, magic, um, and start embracing the, the elven half of my, uh, of my lineage. And, uh, Micah and I, um, and Enti, um, uh, go on our adventures. Okay. Yeah. There, there's a whole community of the Ents that are just now starting to, to move around and uh, you can can teach them and they can teach you. Um, well, uh, that that actually then let's go on a related note. What about you, Lauren? So I think what we see is kind of Lauren, Lauren around a uh, campfire and, you know, he's there with the uh, woman from before, I've forgotten her name, but the woman who knows some druidic lore. Right. And they're going through that old book and they're kind of reading it very carefully. And, you know, they turn a page and then they read the next page and both of them kind of scowl and they tear that, that page of the book out mm -hmm. and they toss it in the fire. And they're nice. kind of selectively editing things. After a time, I think she goes to sleep, and then Laurel picks up the uh, like a quill and some paper and starts writing. And it, the camera kind of zooms in, and you can see it's the story of Brind and Gavel, the Int friends. <laughs> nice. And and what about you, Hild? Uh, I think I stay in this town and like recuperate. And later on, I like range out to try to look for more gold and stuff uh, from the <laughs> from the from the tower. Like there must be more there. Those people were rich, um, but I think I like stay and practice my uh, swordsmanship and stuff like that, and just become like a a better figure in the community and stuff like that. Absolutely, yeah. become a kind yeah. of a buccaneer yeah. out of here, checking out the the local sites. Taking some of the other goblins with you to help dig. 
Um, yeah, maybe we like go on a maybe the last thing we see before it like fades out is going on a mission ominously to that place where uh, it's cursed. And then we're yeah. like, who knows? Maybe they awesome. did it. Maybe they died. Awesome. Thank you guys very much. Uh, that was Forbidden Lands. Um, I would like to take a, a few minutes to talk uh, uh, wishes uh, and stars um, and, and thoughts about the system because uh, Fraser and I had talked about before I ran this about trying to figure out what's going on in the game, um, what we think about it, you know, um, getting some perspective on it. So um, Alejandro, uh, stars or wishes? Things you dug or things you would like to see more of? Um, no, I, I mean, you know, I don't like the the style of uh, game that much. Uh, mm -hmm. But I had a lot of, I had fun. I, I enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed uh, the this the road that we went on led to a satisfying ending with his epilogue, and that, that was that was interesting. Man. So I liked it. I had fun. I okay. would play this. I would play this again. Um, this is um, what what this is mutant zero x two p. Mutant Year Zero is a post apocalyptic game, and that basic system of the die roll and being able to push it um, powers this game. It pow uh, a more simplified version powers Tales from the Loop, um, and then a more complicated system powers Coriolis. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I would play this again, but I, I probably uh, wouldn't actively seek it out um, and i threw you in the deep end you know uh, uh uh because i had i didn't have a sense of how much you you dug complicated systems and, and you came into that first session was a lot of stuff to have to absorb so yeah. so you know we had a, we had a combo about that later but yeah um yeah. i appreciate you you being a good sport and and playing along yeah yeah no i i, I had fun I, I think uh the characters were interesting and um i, I I would like to, I would have liked to have maybe done maybe another week or so. Same thing happened with the Cryptomancer, you know I mean? Yeah, there's always um, one more week. Once, yeah, yeah. When, once it clicked, um, it was good. So, yeah. Good, good. Uh, uh, Steven. Um, so the system was a little weird. I hadn't, I don't think I played this system before. Okay. Is this the uh, this is not what's the name of this system? They call it just call it the mutant system now. The mutant system, okay. Um, I wasn't sure if it was the same system. Is it the same system as the Star Star Trek game? No, that's two D twenty. That's two D twenty. Okay. Well, so it's a little weird. The the for me as a spellcaster, powering up things via willpower and getting willpower slowly, session by session or by failing by big things um, was a little bit, it, it, it felt super uh, risky. Yeah. And I think that's great um, for the theme that they're driving and all of that. And the same thing with any skulls you roll, which I think I almost did every time was a mishap. And it was like, again, super interesting. And I think some of those mishaps kill you, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it was like, oh, I go to heal you for one point of strength, and I drop dead. Um, my favorite things, the things I really liked were, um, I liked the creature made out of sound. Okay. And I liked the uh, the corrupted sorcerer int tree. Those are both very fantastic. I mean, the descriptions of them and the... Uh, ruin that we are around and the trees outside the crystalline leaf trees those were all fantastic i really enjoyed that that's that's very much my interpretation of uh uh the seclusium of uh your phone that um uh, that right. module i i borrow elements from that just as inspiration um but this is that is very much my my module um because uh, you went this way as opposed to some of the other ways. Some of the other ways I had some set stuff for. 
Um, uh, but uh, I enjoyed uh, I enjoyed that. You, one of the things to say, it's interesting you say about the magic system because Fr as Fraser knows, because he's played Mutant Year Zero, it's very much they went, oh, how does the mutation system work in Mutant Year Zero where it's super risky? We'll just adapt that over for spells. And yeah, I'm not I'm not entirely so sold on that. I so what I is think, it in Mutant Year Zero? So in Mutant Year Zero, whenever you use a mutation, uh, you spend willpower. Uh -huh. And for each willpower point you spend, you roll a die. And if you get any skulls, there's a mishap. And uh, rather than being like a D66 table, it's, a, it's like 1D6. And essentially that can be good, over like overclocking you. Or it can also uh, give you a new power. Um, or it can really hurt you. Um, uh, and it feels right for that game because that game is supposed to be like risky and hard. I'm not sure. I'm not sure why the magic system is that risky when it's, it's not like it's that much better than fighting somebody, you know? <laughs> um, true, but I think it fits with the theme for me for the, you know, the, Old school kind of games made magic very risky. Yeah, that's true. It, yes. it, yeah, it does borrow a little of the DCC. Hey, going to cast spells? Well, you're going to go insane, and the yeah. Elder Gods are going to swallow you. Yeah, that's yeah. what it felt like. Was It was like, oh, you're messing with trying to heal people? You're screwed. Yeah, but then you need to have, like, to make it worthwhile, that's when you're like, okay, I'll roll 8d6 for a fireball, right? Like, <laughs> Well, but the thing is, is they point out, in, in the spell casting section that I read, that the more dice you roll, the more chance you have of a mishap. Yeah. So it's kind of like like they specifically called out like the half elf and said, "Well, you get an extra die for the willpower, but it also means you're rolling an extra die, which means you're more likely to do a mishap." Yeah, it's a hard call. Yeah, I, I I'm not I I'm not sure it would be for me. I'm not sure if it'd be satisfying in a long term. Uh, it's I think that's an open question. I agree. Um, it definitely does reinforce the theme, though. I think you're right about that. Mm -hmm. Fraser? Yeah, I I had a great time with it, too. I, it's just such a swingy system that, like, either I'm having a great time or I'm, like, having a good time despite the system. <laughs> so, I don't know. It, it's weird that way. Um, yeah, it is weird what they decided to just pour it over, you know? I think, I mean, one of the things is the push system in that post-apocalyptic game, the role and, and risk feels right for that. I get that, that they want that, some of that risk feel here, but I also think it's just, it's just hard. I mean, like, I think it's, I mean, you got battered twice yeah. in the course of four sessions, just from, from a push. Yeah, I almost died every single time. <laughs> like, I almost got broken every single time in a session. And that was just from me trying to use my strength for combat and stuff. Um, this time I succeeded at most of the things that I did. But, yeah, it's just so swingy that, you know, I think that would just be the curve of this game over a yeah. long period of time where you're like, in order to succeed, you got to get those artifacts and rely on the artifact die and stuff like that. So I think that could be somewhat satisfying once you start building up that and you've got your uh, stronghold. Um, it would be interesting to see long-term travel yeah. with those like eight jobs or whatever. But and at first I was like a little disappointed that we didn't do them. But then I saw how long traveling already took with two jobs, yes. and I was like, maybe not. <laughs> like that that's a lot like i think it would be kind of fun but it'd be one of those sessions where it's like okay you went fishing i went hiking you know i scouted and now we're at the location see you next time <laughs> so yeah i'm glad that we did a sort of abbreviated way i i definitely don't like the way that they do kin talents it makes like almost no sense yeah bought like lumping every single person of a kin is good at that like for it it's that essentialist fancy race thing that i find yeah abhorrent and you can't even like take the talent from the other kin right it's like specifically you can never have that so if you're not an elf you'll never have inner peace 
<laughs> right? <laughs> so I was like, uh, I don't know about that. And especially it doesn't make sense because in the book, the flavor text tries to subvert Tolkien stuff, but then the kin talent and the kin attribute reinforce the thing that they're trying to subvert at the same time. I don't think, I don't think they're trying to subvert. Well, I don't know. They're trying to be all edgy, right? Because they're like halflings beat each other. They're terrible, right? Yeah, <laughs> domestic but, abuse. But but you've still got goblins are terrible, orcs yeah. are terrible. You know all these things. It, it's it's why I I did that village the way I did because as it's written, it's 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 very much you know classic Tolkien. Here are a bunch of humans go run around, and I was like, <laughs> I want to undercut that because that's more fun. Yeah, it was great. Um, I really I, enjoyed that. Can I ask you? I, I'm interested in getting Coriolis for the specifically for the setting because I heard it was uh, Arabic inspired. Yes. Um, so how mm, yeah. how well do they pull that off? A and because now you know you're you're saying that they're trying to like they kind of lean into the stereotypes. So how how successfully can they? Does, does that make sense? My question makes sense. Yeah, no, I think it makes sense. So my background actually is in Middle Eastern studies. Um, and I did this month where I ran the Seventh Sea Crescent Empire um, book, which is their sort of the fantasy analog of, of the Middle Eastern and Arab states. And I ran uh, Blades in the Dark in Eruvia, which is kind of an uh, Iranian, Iraqi inspired flavored thing. And I ran Coriolis. Coriolis is has all of the like beautiful trappings and look and ideas that are borrowed from Arab culture, but I think it's a little more Orientalist. Like I think it's it's a little more exoticized. Uh, if I were going to run Coriolis seriously, a not that system, and b. I would really want to take some time to go through and go, okay, how do I make this have a more interesting and respectful and deeper feel? It's got a lot of the trappings. It's It's got beautiful artwork. There's there's so much in it that looks like it's going to come close, but then it, it kind of misses the mark for me in the end. And the, um, and the missions don't like help you with it either. Oh yeah, no. The, the missions are just like an analogous to like what you would do in any other sci-fi game. So it's not like steeped in cultural things or anything like that. Yeah. And I'd, I'd say, actually, I think that's one of the, the weakest points of a lot of the, the, this free league stuff is I don't think the modules do a great, great job supporting the ideas. Um, do they have a, a, an interesting module written by a bunch of OSR people that has some neat stuff in it for, for forbidden lands. My biggest complaint, I'm going to tell you my biggest complaint here, and then I'll, I'll let you guys go, is so this blood mist closes communities off, right? And when I first read it, I was like, oh, that's like 20, 30 years ago. And then I was like, oh, no, it looks like it's supposed to be longer. And I was like, oh, it must be like 80 years ago. So we've got a couple generations. Oh, no. These communities have been closed off from one another for three hundred years years and the book all like all of the old factions from before that are still around and all those things it makes no sense and make no sense like that concept of 300 years of these communities being isolated i'm like okay i'm with i'm if you're gonna do that i'm down for that this is not that these communities have not been isolated for 300 years um because things would be very different and and as a as a world builder, you would need to think about that. So, yeah, I was worried because, I like that's why I was worried about the flavor text because I was like, are they setting us up for some sort of cultural exploration or something like that? Because all of them point at the other races negatively, right? Like, yeah. It it. Yeah, and then we're isolated for 300 years. So I'm like, are we all racist towards each other or something? Like, why are you telling me all this? But it doesn't I, doesn't say anything because it's the player facing thing. And then when you go to the GM thing, it's like, don't read it yeah. at all. So I'm like, and well, how do I know? <laughs> yeah. And it's five years since the mist lifted. Um, we, yeah. 
I think there's some great ideas, but I don't think that all of the concepts hold together um, uh, in terms of the setting. Um, but, you know, it's a beautiful book and there's, there's lots of cool stuff in here. And they're going to, I, I, I like the mutant system at base. I think there's some things that they're fun to do with it and things and I'm looking forward. They're going to put out eventually an, uh, an open game license for it. And there's some things I want to do with that. Um, and I'll look forward to that. Um, but, uh, this is, this is, I'm, I'm on the fence about this. I have to think about it more. Cool. So I, I did enjoy the game though. This is the thing is I say all this and I had a great time running it for you guys, you know? Um, uh, and I thought I was going to kill some of you tonight. I really did. It's, it was good because it, it was enjoyable because it was us. Cause it was like, it's what I always say about the gauntlet community. It's like the, the system is almost every time secondary to the group that I yeah. end up playing with. Absolutely. I agree. So you mentioned um, that you might have killed us. How does death work in the system? Once you get broken, what happens? So when you get broken, um, I have to look at that. Because I, I know that if you, I think I saw on the mishap table, if you roll poorly on it, you just die. Yeah, if you get broken, let's see, recovery. Um, a opponent's left all strength and agility is defenseless. Um, ba, 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 ba. Um, oh, so uh, if you take damage, you take the critical injuries. If your critical injuries is listed as lethal, someone has to make a successful healing attack to save you. Otherwise, uh, you die. Um, and there's some of, some of the critical injuries that deal instant death. So if you were already broken and you got hit again, we would be rolling more critical injuries. I see. Okay. Yeah. And eventually you would get uh, uh, battered to death. <laughs> well, I'm going to stop recording, and I want to thank you all uh, again for playing this with me. Um, and uh, I, I hope um, I hope you have a great weekend because it's Thursday. There we go. <laughs>